Thank you, Miss Bridges. My pleasure. Next, please. Name? Anne, Anne, Anne Marie. Would you walk up stage and back, please? Oh, uh, any particular kind of walk? An ordinary walk. Ordinary, right. Thank you. That's all. That's all? This is a one-line part, miss. We're mostly interested in your stage presence. Oh. I, I, I really wouldn't mind doing a reading. I'm prepared. It isn't necessary. Well, would you like to see me walk some more? Well, uh, we'll watch you as you walk away. Oh, oh good. Uh, pardon me. Yes, what is it? Well, uh, you said you were going to watch me walk away, and uh, then you started talking, and I uh, just, you know, wondered if I should wait till you were through or not. You can walk now. We're all eyes. <laughs> hi, Ed. Oh, hi. That's Ethel Merman. You're early. Well, I didn't have anything else to do, so I thought I'd meander over and find out how it was going. Incidentally, how is it going? <laughs> Fine. We're uh, just about finished here. We're casting the walk on. Any of those girls look right to you? If you don't step back, I'm going to yank out every hair in your head. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do see someone. Let's use. That girl. down and you tell me all about it, all right? Oh, I want to call my folks and tell them. I'll be right back. <laughs> two coffees, please. Operator, could I please have Brewster 2799970? Oh, okay. Oh, well, there has to be somebody there. I ought to know I was born and raised there. Well, could you ring a little louder? <laughs> I know. Isn't it wonderful? I still can't believe it really happened. I knew you'd be excited. Thanks. Thanks again. It was nice talking to you, operator. Bye. I'm sorry I tied it up so long. I just didn't mean to. I just forgot about the time. <laughs> well, blame on Ethel Merman. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long. Were you folks excited when you told them? Oh, Donald, the whole town was excited when I told them. No wonder it took you so long. It isn't only that I got the part, but Ethel Merman herself picked me out. Honey, I think it's great. This is the most unbelievable chance of a lifetime incredible thing that's ever happened to me. Somehow you've managed to make great sound pretty flat. All right, tell me about the audition. What did you read? I didn't read. I walked. Walked? That's all? Well, they did have me do an encore. Well, what kind of part is it? Okay, 
years. It's, it's probably no part at all. But it's a chance to be on the same stage with Ethel Merman, Donald. Ethel Merman. <gasps> uh, what's wrong? What if I forget my lines? I mean, I mean, what if I just go up? What if I, I could ruin the play? Make a mockery of an Ethel Merman production. I mean, there should be in front of thousands of people. And I'll, I'll go like that. I mean, I'll go blank. I won't be able to remember a thing. All you have is a small case of stage fright. Wrong. All I have is a large case of stage fright. Well, well, why worry? You might not have any lines. And you can't forget how to walk. Donald. What? Bite your tongue. Good morning, Miss Merman. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Ed. Good morning, Ethel. We're going to start from the top as soon as the dancers have finished warming up. OK, holler when you want me. Hi, kids. Hi, fellas. How's everything going? Good morning. Good morning, Ethel Merman. <laughs> Good morning, Ethel Merman. Good morning, Miss Merman. Good morning, Ethel. We're just playing good morning. Good morning, Ethel Merman. I'm sure she doesn't think you're anything of the kind. She was probably flattered that you were so impressed. If I act like such a nervous wreck just speaking, what can she expect of me on stage? Oh, honey, I'm sure a great star like Ethel Merman understands. Shh, that's her dressing room. That's her dressing room. Oh, yeah. Shh, will you be quiet? <laughs> She doesn't want to disturb you. You don't have to tiptoe. I'm not the kind of person who yells at people for walking around. Well, I just didn't want to appear to be excessively noisy. Oh, excuse me. This is my boyfriend, Donald Hollinger, Ethan Mermel. How do you do, Miss Merman? How do you do? I meant Ethel Merman. Yes, I figured that. Why, well, Anna's a very great admirer of yours, and so am I. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so glad you're with the show. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're with the show, too. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean... I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, nice to have met you. A pleasure. <laughs> you see? You see? Honey, will you stop worrying? When are you through? We're supposed to be finished at 6. I'll pick you up. Well, then I'll get fired first. Then you pick me up. <laughs> Money. Hey, everybody, here comes the picnic wagon. Okay, hold it a minute. Oh, Ann. Yes, sir. Could I uh, talk to you for a minute? Something wrong? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. You're reading the line real fine. Oh, you want a bigger smile there? Maybe a little more energy. How about a bigger move? No, no, I, uh, I want you to do it without applause. Oh, did I applaud? Every time Ethel finishes a song. Gee, I, I didn't realize. I just think she's so terrific when she sings. I, I, I guess I just didn't realize. Well, we all feel the same way you do, but uh, it's going to look funny if every time Ethel finishes singing, you're the only one in the cast applauding. The audience will think the rest of us don't like her. Oh, sure, sure, I can see that. I'm really sorry, Mr. Burns. I, I'm very sorry. That's all right. OK, kids, that's it. See you tomorrow. 9 o'clock tomorrow, top of back two. Is everybody going? I think so. What's taking you so long? I wanted to be the last one to leave. Why, what happened? I don't know. I think I did the day was all wrong. I didn't act like a professional at all. I had Bruce to New York written all over me. Oh, honey, look, I think you're making everything a lot worse than it really is. I can just see Ethel Merman now, probably sitting at Sardi's, telling everybody about this silly old lamb that she was just cracked up at everything she did all day. I don't know what happened to me. I just, I just got so, so tongue-tied and so, oh, for heaven's sake. Honey, honey, sweetheart. No, it can't be that bad. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. Honey, this was your first day. The first day on any new job is always the roughest. Please, Donald, I just want to forget about the whole mess. 
a matter of fact, we have a whole new mess to look forward to. What's that? I'm making dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What? What is my... That's her dressing room. Oh, well, so... Shh, shh, shh. Hey, well, honey, she's probably gone. Probably. A check. Oh, please, Donald, check. Honey, well, what do you suppose she's in there? What difference does it make? I don't want her to see me. Oh, please, Donald. Stop joking. I am not joking, honey. She is sitting in there eating a hamburger. How could Ethel Moon be sitting all alone in a dressing room eating a hamburger? <laughs> now, you'll see when you walk past. Now, will you come on? Good evening, Miss Murray. Something wrong? You are eating a hamburger. <laughs> Did I get your order? Oh, no, no, not at all. I ordered a well done with onions and relish and a chocolate malt. I didn't order anything. Oh. <laughs> then this couldn't be yours. <laughs> no, it isn't. Well, I'm very sorry that we disturbed you. Oh, but you didn't disturb me at all. I, I just thought maybe you lost something, you know, the way you kept passing by in front of my dressing room. Oh, well, that was just plain old walking past a dressing room. <laughs> yeah, that's all that was. Well, I'm real sorry we bothered you. Why do you keep saying you're bothering me? You, you're not bothering me at all. Well, it's just that you're so busy and everything. I'm not busy either. I'm finished for the day. Well, aren't you going home? Uh, yeah, I'm going back to the hotel in a little while. Hotel? Well, you see, I live in the country. I don't come to New York very often, so I live in a hotel. You mean you're by yourself? Mm-hmm. Is that your dinner? Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, Miss Merman, I have an idea. Would you care to join Anne and me for dinner? Donald, of course Miss Merman wouldn't care to. Oh, I would so care to. It's just that I'm so tired of restaurants. That's why this. Oh, no, no, we're not going to a restaurant. Anne is going to cook. How do you like macaroni and cheese? I can't stand it. <laughs> Of course, you can't stand it. Well, we really have to go. Good night. Hey, hey, hold it a minute. Do you like stuffed cabbage? One of my favorites. I don't know how to make stuffed cabbage. Well, I do. You mean you'll cook for us? Wait a minute. I'll get my coat. How do you feel now? I feel wonderful. Gee, she's really marvelous, isn't she? I told you. That's what I love about the theater. You know what I mean, Donald? One day you're nobody, and the next Ethel Merman stuffing your cabbage. Ann, hey, wait a minute. I saw you in the supermarket, but I guess you didn't hear me when I called you. I'm sorry. Ruthie, this is... Hi, Don. Hi, Ruthie. Jerry's not gonna be home for dinner, and I figured you were tired of macaroni and cheese, so I was gonna invite you over for goulash, but I see you got company. Hi. Hi. I'm Ruth Bauman, a friend of Ann's. I'm Ethel Merman. Good meeting you. Likewise. See y'all later. Uh, if there's anything you need, Ann, just holler. Yeah, right. See you later. Come on. Here we are. Say, this is nice. It's a small apartment. Well, small doesn't mean bad. Where's the kitchen? Oh, I'll show you. It's right back here. Ethel Merman? <laughs> You are Russell Merman. I can't believe it. I can't tell you how much I admire you and everything. I can't believe it. Ruthie, please. I know I'm sorry, but I just got so excited. I guess you and Anne have to rehearse. Uh, Ruthie, I only have one line in the play. Miss Merman's just here for dinner. You're having dinner here? Well, I would... And I knew you when you were a waitress. <laughs> well, I'll get out of your hair. Um, I guess Anne has to get busy in the kitchen. No, not I and me. I do the cooking. You, you're doing the cooking? <laughs> excuse me, please. Oh, by all means. You're excused. Thank you. 
I can't believe it. What's she gonna make? Stuffed cabbage. Oh, Anne, save me some, please. You finish, then you can come over and have dessert with us. Oh, thanks, Anne. I think I'll change into something more, you know. Formal. Yeah, no. <laughs> Where is she? Anne? Not Anne. The one, the one. Are you supposed to be somebody? Well, I'm Don Hollinger. Who's that? <laughs> uh, no one in particular. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Brenton from the third floor. They told me at the supermarket that Anne was with a celebrity. But I didn't get the name. Oh, that. Who is it? Ethel Merman. Who? <laughs> Ethel Merman. I don't think that was the name. Well, well, that's who it was. I'll double check with the man at the checkout counter. Okay, you do that. Of course I'll do it. I love celebrities. Once I saw Bert Parks in a cab. <laughs> oh, Don, I need another half pound of chopped meat and some garlic. Would you mind? Uh, not at all. I'll be right back. Anne, you home? Anne? Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Ann's father. Do you you happen to know where she is? Oh, she went across the hall to get me a bigger skillet. Excuse me, please. Uh, you look vaguely familiar. Have we ever met? I don't think so. I'm Ethel. I'm Lou. Oh, hi, Lou. Uh, hand me the pepper, will you, please? Yeah, sure. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you a cook? Well, I think so. What are you making? Stuffed cabbage. I suppose you know that my daughter is an actress. Uh-huh. Too much tomato paste. Are you a critic? No, I own a restaurant. Have you ever seen my daughter on the stage? Uh-huh. Easy on the vinegar. <laughs> she's pretty good, isn't she? Oh, she's not bad. What do you mean, not bad? I mean, she'll get better. Uh, give me back the pepper, will you? You put in enough pepper. <laughs> Why are you trying to start trouble around here? Just give me back the pepper. I'm trying to make dinner. You're trying to ruin dinner. <laughs> My daughter won a drama award at Brewster College. You didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. But will you give me back the pepper? They don't give that award to just anybody. Stuffed cabbage happens to be my specialty. Pepper, that's your specialty. Why don't you take the word of an expert? Expert, let me tell you something. I could write a book about what you don't know about stuffed cabbage. Yelling will get you no place. If you think this is yelling, you ain't heard yelling. Listen, will you tell this lady, whoever she is, who I am? Tell her who knows about cooking? Yes, this is my father. He knows about cooking. Daddy, this is Ethel Merman. I knew it wasn't Betty Crocker. <laughs> who? Ethel Merman, Daddy. The Miss Ethel Merman, the star of Gypsy, with whom I am lucky enough to have a small part this week. Well, I'll be done. I saw you in the show, Oklahoma. The only reason I didn't recognize you, I had a bad seat. I was way up in the balcony, and I couldn't... And Daddy, Miss Merman's never been in Oklahoma. <laughs> See? If you don't know anything about musicals, how would you know about stuffed cabbage? <laughs> Daddy, why don't you go relax and read the newspaper? Well, I think I'm needed here. <laughs> However... Good, good. J just take it easy. You know, my father's been a staunch admirer of yours for years, Miss Merman. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who can take or lead me on a stage. But in a kitchen, I'm unbeatable. <laughs> Is there something I can do for you? Yes, you can get me those little onions over there. Little onions, right, right, right away. Here I come. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's the matter with me. You gotta pull yourself together. Miss Merman, I gotta tell you something. I've been a nervous wreck for almost a week. I, I think I've got them all. What are you so nervous about? Well, it's just that... I've got so much respect for you. Oh, I have a lot of respect for you, too. For me? Why? Well, because you're just getting started. It's going to be a lot tougher on you than it ever was for me. Competition is tougher. Well, it couldn't have been easy for you. <laughs> it's never easy. I can remember my first club job. I get out there and I sang, uh, After you've gone. <laughs> you must have been terrific. I got fired. The customers thought I was too loud. Did you ever hear anything so ridiculous in your life? Never. Of course. And let me give you a tip. Now, say, for instance, this is the audience. You must always let the audience know that you're enjoying what you're doing out there, see? And if you ever feel nervous, you just reach out. Just reach out. Yeah, and you grab them by the throat. 
grab them by the throat? Yes, and then you shake them. Shake them? No, I mean really shake them. Really shake them, <laughs> yes, ma'am. And then you let out. Out, 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 out. Ah! Roses! Loud. <laughs> Here's coffee, everybody. Does anybody want anything else? Yeah, any more cabbage left? Well, there's only one piece left, and I promised that to Mrs. Hefner for the fourth floor. The whole floor? Well, everybody gets a bite, just so they can say they had dinner with Ethel Merman. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. Miss Marmon, say a little Just a little thing, please sing a little thing. There's no business like show business, like no business I know. See how little it takes to make people happy? How does that look? Looks like a bowl of fruit. Honey, I'm telling you, this has been one exciting evening around here. I know. Isn't she marvelous, Donald? I mean, she's really the most wonderful person I've ever met. See? And look how worried you were. Oh, when someone meets an idol, Donald, you, you can't help but fall apart a little the first time you meet them. That's right. But then she turns out to be a perfectly normal human being, fallible enough to understand your shortcomings, because she's capable of making mistakes herself. I know. That's why I'm so crazy about her. She put too much pepper in the stuffed cabbage. <laughs> Once I did a show in Atlantic City, and... Hey, what time is it? Uh, almost 11. Almost 11 o'clock? Well, that's it. Betty by time oh. zero hour. Oh, no, 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 I gotta get some sleep oh, if I'm no. gonna hit high J over R tomorrow. <laughs> and over here, over here. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. I hate to tell you this, but I'm leaving you with the dishes. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Gee, I'm so glad you came over. You're a lucky girl. You're pretty, you've got talent, and you've got nice friends. Thanks for a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye. Step aside, folks. No autographs, please. Miss Merman's got a show to do tomorrow. Please, step aside, folks. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, Anne. Good night, Ethel Merman. <laughs>